Be reverent. Good afternoon and welcome to SAPC News. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. As the family, uh, how important is it for you to also get your voice out there to speak to South Africans who have been uh, showing their, their love and their appreciation and their support during this time of grief? We're so um, grateful to the media, all of the news media, who have given us the opportunity to, um, to say to our fellow South Africans and to people around the world who um, loved and appreciated my father, who have worked for justice and peace in all corners of the world. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing our grief. Thank you for grieving alongside us. Um, thank you for the words of comfort, for the countless acts of kindness that have made um, this um, loss bearable. Um, it is it, uh, in in uh, the ways of fondness. We would have loved my dad to live forever as that young, energetic person that he was. Um, but that's not the way of the world. The way of the world is that um, people walk their time on earth and then they die and, and um, that is as it should be. Um, those of us who are left behind have been left with a baton to pick up and to run forward to uh, ensure that peace and justice prevail um, for all people in the world. And also maybe, how are you feeling as the family? I know I did ask you this question earlier on someone, and most of the people around South Africa, they want to know how is Umamalia also feeling. And also, when did you hear about the passing away? Were you, I understand, you stay in the Netherlands? Yes. Yeah, um, the, the family is, I, you know, I say soggy around the edges. Um, so it means that, um, yeah, we're okay until we're not okay. Um, oh, Mama Leia is strong and she has really been strengthened by the prayers and the support and the love that has flooded into her from all over. Um, and um, I had come home um, just before Christmas to, to come and, and visit with my parents and had to go back. Um, to, to the Netherlands where I live um, and and I heard early on um, Boxing Day um, I, I actually my mother had messaged me to say that my father really wasn't doing well and so I, I called and I FaceTimed and he was still alive then um, and I, I got off the phone and maybe 10 minutes later I had a phone call that he, he had gone. Um, condolences to you once again. Right? Thank you. Uh, so, uh, talk to us about how you'd like your father to be remembered. Yeah, I'd love my father to be remembered um, in our minds in um, love and in joy. Um, but more than that, I would love my father to be remembered in our actions, um, in how we treat one another, in how we treat our environment, in how we care for those who are so needy of our care, um, in acts of generosity, in work for justice and peace, and in not taking ourselves too seriously. <laughs> and also you spoke about how you would like the, the churches and maybe the government and just the general people to honor his legacy. How would you love for them to honor his legacy? My father um, stood for flourishing for not only our planet, but also all of the people who walk God's green earth. Um, and so I hope that our government um, will um, take the opportunity to really rededicate themselves to the unfinished business of, um, of ending the divisions that apartheid put in place 
of ending the disparities between wealth and poverty that still exist in our country, um, of ending the exclusion of people who live with physical and mental um, disabilities, um, of ending the exclusion or the um, threats against those who are not heterosexual. Um, and so I, I pray that those, that the words of our constitution um, don't just stay as um, typed words bound in paper in a nice pretty book somewhere, but that they really do take root and take life in our country. As someone who is also in priesthood, um, who is also preaching that gospel, it must be hard to, to, to speak about some of these sensitive issues such as uh, racial inequalities and also uh, gender-based inequalities. Um, I was speaking to Mama Prigalia Obama was saying, even during the time of apartheid, Uta Desmond had the skill to speak about um, the, 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 the equality of rights for all the people. How difficult is it, especially in the position that you are in, and also how can we learn from, 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 from how he dealt with this? Yeah, my, my father had a uniquely light touch. Um, he could tell you a joke and teach you a lesson all in one go. Um, you didn't realize you were learning something until you, you know, until you were kind of in mid laugh and you were like, oh, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> that just landed. Um, and yeah, there's, that, is, um, that is his gift uh, from God. Um, but the gift of challenging injustice anywhere we see it, that is a gift all of us have from God. Every single last one of us can look and see what is wrong and do something and say something to work towards making it right. That wasn't his unique gift. And most people uh, remember the Archie in a very delightful manner for his humor. Any inside joke maybe amongst you or to his grandchildren? How did he make you laugh? How would you remember his lighter side? Uh, something that you can share to us from inside as a family to the South African. Oh, I don't know. I, I, um, there, were, there were so many small jokes over the course of the day and so many things that he found amusing. But I, I had to say, you know, the last time that, that I was with him and he was um, a little, he was a, awake, a little awake, and I was, I was telling him how much I loved him, and I, I said to him, oh, you're the best daddy in the whole world, and he kind of slowly opened his eyes and he said, mm, your standards are low. <laughs> When you were younger, I, I know they actually loved to dance and stuff. Did he maybe embarrass you as young kids at school where he'd come, break out the dancing and stuff? Um, no, I don't, I don't remember that. I do remember um, the first time he came to speak at my high school and I was absolutely terrified that he was going to be terrible and I... Um, I, I went the the I was I was maybe in the third third form or so and the prefects let me go and sit all the way in the back of the hall in the prefect section so that I could hide out if he was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, you know, he was his usual self. I mean, the whole school was just roaring with laughter throughout his his talk, and he was just such a delight. And he came out and he said, "Okay, I, I didn't embarrass you too much, now, did I?" <laughs> Rev, do you think the standards were low? Oh, my standards are the highest. <laughs> Reverend Tumpo, uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that was the daughter of the late Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu and uh, narrating the life well lived.